All right, so here's the deal. You you call me later. I'm going to be in a car and I won't be driving and I can I can talk to you then. And I really want to talk to you because I think it's really important for me to hear all the great advice that I'm giving you so I can reflect and say, wow, you know what? I'm actually really good at this. Of course, I'm kidding, sort of. But I, I'm going to share, if that's okay, with people on the Lands blog, some of the thoughts that you just had without mentioning your name. All right, man. I love you. Okay. I kind of just said that for, uh, I, I didn't mean that, okay? All right, bye. So that was a buddy of mine that I actually uh, tweeted about, I, I, I think two days ago, I said, you know, my buddy's in real trouble. He's been struggling terribly um, with severe, long-term treatment-resistant depression, which is just honestly, it's the ultimate heartbreak in this. It's just like my heart, it's just, I just feel so terrible for this guy because I know the pain that he's in. I have felt where he is right now. But as I said to him, your situation is complicated a thousand times worse than mine because I had been through it before and I knew that there was a pretty good chance that therapy would get me out of it. Um, drug therapy, talk therapy. I had a reason even amongst this negative energy that the illness uh, conducts upon us. I still had the the knowledge that I would probably get better, but not so for for my buddy. So I, I just I just talk to him now, and it's fresh in my mind. So I wanted to share with you some of the things that he was saying, and um, we all feel these things. I mean, he was saying, you know, I feel guilty. I feel like this is my fault. I feel like maybe I didn't do the things over the course of my life that didn't lead me in this direction. He said, you know, I feel like. Uh, I made bad choices and somehow they're now coming back to haunt me. I feel like this illness to some extent must be psychosomatic, not psychiatric, but psychosomatic that somehow, you know, I'm just imagining it. I mean, it, it, as absurd as that is to him, even yesterday, because he was saying yesterday in the afternoon, he didn't feel too badly and everything looked different. It was like, it, it, like life was in full color yesterday. And then this morning when he woke up, it was in black and white and now he sees the world totally differently. He said to me, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so jealous of looking at other people and, and their way they enjoy their lives. And I said, you know, I, I don't think you're being fair to yourself. You're not jealous, you're envious because there's a difference. I think jealousy is, is a sense of bitterness where you don't want other people to experience joy. Uh, but in the case of, of my friend, and I know in my case too, you look and you're envious of that. It's not that you want other people to become sick so everything is even. You want to be better like them. So these, these are things that I, I, just, I just heard from him. And uh, I said to him, you know, this is, uh, this is your illness talking. And the problem with this illness, and it's complicating uh, everything that he feels because one of the symptoms of the illness is negative thinking. But also one of the symptoms of the illness is the fact that you can't bring a positivity to the negative thinking. So you have these negative thoughts. This is my fault. I'm never going to get better. Somehow I brought this upon myself. I'm a bad person. And a normal person, maybe, when I say normal, I mean a normal brain, would be able to work their way out of it. But the negative voice in our head is so powerful and so convincing that it's impossible to get away. Even though you have a guy like me talking to my buddy, telling him, well, you know, you don't think I'm to blame for my illness. Why are you to blame for yours? So it's, 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 like, it's like an illness that forces you down and it keeps you down. It's like it has its foot on your head and you can't move. And the more you try to fight, the more impossible it is. So then you give up fighting. And I just... I want you to know the reason why I'm telling you this is that um, my buddy is in a place that um, you may have been. And when you hear all the things that he says, you think, well, that seems ridiculous. When he says things like, well, you know, I, this is my fault and uh, I deserve this. Think of how ridiculous that is. I'm not loved. People around me don't love me. Think of how ridiculous that is. So it helps to know that when you feel healthy because you can try, try your best, to prevent yourself next time you're in the hole to embracing it. It's like you can't convince yourself that the negative thoughts are wrong. What you can try to do is convince yourself not to pay attention to them. To say, okay, I hear that, but I'm not going to embrace that. And I think there's a difference. And there's a whole bunch of other things that he told me, which I'll get to tomorrow. 
But this is why we do this. SickNotWeek.com, 24 hours a day, 364 days a year. We're here to share, to make sure that you know, if you're in the position that my buddy is, um, you can reach out to us and you can talk to us on the phone, well, sometimes, or you can uh, communicate with us via chat or you can email us, but just know that we're here.